Hello, you're welcome to the City Newsroom. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And mine is Umaru Sanda Amadou. Coming up. Torrential rains and spillage of Bagra Dam claims two more lives in Mampurugu in the northeast region, bringing the casualties to six. Uh, two more deaths from the Mampurugu Maduri uh, district, according to our. But uh, the, because the farmlands have been submerged in water, they try to use uh, canoes to do the harvest. Meanwhile, flooding wreaks havoc in parts of the Upper East region as well. The whole house was just water. I went outside the, 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 the compound, the whole house was water. I can't find my animals. A lot of animals, pigs, uh, fowls, they were scattered. I can't even find them. In other stories, NDC flag bearer John Mahama speaks ahead of the party's manifesto launch on Monday and rallies electorates in the Upper West region to vote massively for the NDC. The MPP frog is dying. So now we can measure it. If your factory hasn't come, it is not coming again. If your one million dollars hasn't come, it is not coming again. And later, residents of Donfase want compensation from government following military invasion of the area of a land dispute and brutality a week ago. Let's bring you details of our stories and two more persons have died while using the canyon to have us. They are maze in the northeast region, according to NADMO officials. Now, this brings the number of persons killed due to flood waters to six. Correspondent Max Osuk reports that several communities in the Mamprugu district are overwhelmed. Farmers at the Mamprugu Mwaduri are desperately working to rescue their crops from being destroyed by flood waters. Two farmers who were using a canoe to pick their maize have drowned. Uh, two more deaths from the Mamprugu Mwaduri uh, district, according to our... That, uh, the, because their farmers have been submerged in water, they try to use uh, canoes to do the harvest. So they try to do that, and then... Uh, uh, only God knows what happened. So, uh, it was just a day that their bodies were discovered. One of them is coming from uh, Fungisi. That is a, 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 a village or a town uh, around uh, Wusa South. But he farms around uh, Kukwa. That is the Makuru Maduri area. And the other one is coming from Kukwa. This brings the number of persons killed to six as a result of both torrential rainfall and the spillage of the Bagri Dam. The previous deaths were recorded at Janga in the West Mampresi municipality, Lambiency in the East Mampresi municipality, and Bumpurugu in the Bumpurugu district, according to the National Disaster Management Organization in the region. Sweeps of farmlands have also been submerged. Several communities in the Mauduri district have been cut off from accessing healthcare and markets in the nearby communities due to continuous downpour in recent days as these residents explain. When it's rain, the market woman has nowhere to sit and sell. Even those are having stores there, it will be difficult for them to open their stores and it will be difficult for the customers to access the area and buy the items. Car cannot come to Zanlu here. Even what king cannot come to come. It will come empty, but to come with load, it can come. And here we also do farming work. So whenever we want to sell this, we can't get somebody to come and buy because there's no way uh, for a car to come. So for that matter, love is, is difficult for us in Zalu here. The nurse in charge of Yagaba and Yizesi Chips compound, Adam Philemon, is now struggling to reach his clients as the rules have been cut off due to the flowers. According to him, OPD attendance have been slowed since the place started flooding. 
when I did my way, um, I saw that the attendance for the CWC has reduced drastically because of the uh, some women couldn't come to the facility. So that is why I feel struggled to come to this place to see what is happening. And from here, then after I write my report, I will make the analysis to see the number of women who couldn't attend. The floods in this part of the country is a perennial problem, and the government is yet to find a solution to the issue. But until then, communities along the White Volta will continue to be trapped in this predicament. Still on the disaster, torrential rains in the Upper East region have displaced hundreds of residents in Anatim, a suburb of Bolgatanga. The heavy downpour flooded houses and submerged crops. Affected residents who have to seek asylum, I beg your pardon, in either schools or other unused public places are appealing to the government to urgently come to their aid. The Upper East region in the past weeks has been hit by torrential rains, submerging farmlands and causing destruction to properties. The Anatem community in the early hours of Sunday after a heavy downpour flooded many houses. The floods collapsed some houses and destroyed properties, including foodstuffs. For fear of their lives, Affected residents were seen parking their belongings to seek asylum elsewhere. Speaking to City News, some affected residents passionately appealed to government to come to their rescue. I was inside my room when my mother came and knocked the door. So I came out and then she said, that water, water. So when I came out, the whole house was just water. I went outside the, 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 the compound. The whole house was water. I can't find my animals. A lot of animals, pigs, uh, fowls, they were scattered. I can't even find them. So, so as of now, we don't know where to sleep. We are just on the roadside. So we are pleading government, if they can support us, get us a place to sleep. And then our food too. We don't have food. If they can also get us a food, and then we can also cater ourselves. As of now, we don't have food to eat. We, don't have, we lost our things. So many things. Fowls, guinea fowls, pigs, a lot of things. So we couldn't even pick our food, our clothes. We didn't even pick nothing, including our goats and guinea fowls. A lot of things. We, we, we lost a lot of things. So we need them to help us to get a place to stay. Officials of the Upper East Regional Directorate of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, have in the interim provided some relief items to the affected families. Deputy Regional Coordinator in charge of operations, Mr. David Mba, told certain News his outfit will decide the fate of the affected residents after an assessment of the extent of damage. What we have done is to move the people to the schools and then there's a filling station just uh, close by. Some of them are there. But you realize that the school and the filling station is an open place. So the other things we had to provide for them to be able to live comfortably in the schools and then the filling station is what we have we are providing now in the interim. That is the mosquito quiet the mosquito nets, the blankets, the mats. But we think that uh, once it is an issue that uh, you know, has occurred, I think this is not the first that um, subsequently we will get to talk to the people so that they can build better or rather move to the higher grounds. You know, residents of Fumbisi in the Bulsa South District in the Upper East Region will now give a sigh of relief following the construction of drainage systems within the township. Now, the residents hitherto had to battle with the consequence of poor drainage systems, which led to floods and destruction of properties. The Bulsa South District can be described as the hub of rice production and has one of the biggest markets in the Upper East Region that generates revenue for the Assembly. 
But the lack of drainage systems within the township did not only worsen the sanitation situation in the area, but also flooded houses and shops whenever it rained. It is against the backdrop of this that the Bursa South Assembly have constructed drainage systems within the Fumbisi Township to ameliorate the plight of residents. Speaking to City News, some residents commended government for the intervention and appealed for more development in the area. Five years now, this place it has been a waterlogged area. But once they've constructed this drainage, it helped to keep the people a lot this drainage season. Usually when the rain falls, uh, water normally enters into, uh, you can see this house, water normally enters into the place, but once it has, they've constructed this drain, it helps prevent water from entering into the place again. When this drain was not constructed, there were a lot of flood and life, and take a lot of life away. But now it's better. And you can see that the accidents has also reduced, and uh, we are begging the government to do more. Uh, we have seen improvement upon the uh, drainage constructed and the road as well. District Chief Executive for Bursa South, Daniel Gariba, assured residents that some critical roads in the district have been packaged and awarded for construction and when completed will ameliorate the plight of commuters. We are expecting that before the end of the year, uh, all this will be as part of Make sure that the drainage system in the town is properly solved. The road network in town is good. Alongside this one, other road networks are equally good. With us. But, uh, first, on my mind, in the Fumbisi Kanjaga uh, road, I have followed it up vigorously through the feeder roads. Uh, both at the regional and, and uh, uh, headquarters level. As part of measures to ensure that no school people sit on the bare floor for studies, Mr. Gariba said the assembly under the one million per constituency program has procured 500 dual desks to help eliminate the situation. Under the one million per constituency policy of His Excellency Nana Kufado, we decided to procure 500 pieces of furniture uh, to be given to the GES for onward distribution to the various institutions within the district. The district, under the Planting for Export program, has also commenced the cultivation of 50 acres of cashew. Now, in each of these two communities, we are doing 25 acres each of cashew plantation. Um, for the community. Now we have workers who have been uh, employed, or 80, 80 plus of them, who have worked on the nursery, who are also going to work on the cashew plantation to make sure that they, 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 they grow well. Move on, on and flag bearer of the main opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, John Dramani Mahama, on Sunday ended his four day tour of the Upper West Region with a call on the electorate to vote massively for the NDC in the December elections. According to him, Ghana's development has stagnated since the governing New Patriotic Party took the reins of power, hence the need to bring back the NDC to provide the needed development in the country. Here's a report by City News' Latif Mahama. It was a sight to behold as people from all walks of life mass up the streets to catch a glimpse of former President John Dramani Mahama as he wrapped up his four-day campaign tour of the Upper West region. Some of the communities he visited include Ermon, Babli, Laura, Zambo, Brefo, Dafiama, and Isa. Prominent among our cry for development is the inadequate infrastructure for our only senior high school in the community. The Brefo Senior High School, which was started during the last NDC administration, the school currently begs for boarding facilities, classrooms, a kitchen, and essential facilities to, com to complement its status as a boarding school. To add to the above, it has been a critical call for the government of Ghana to help maximize the potential of the Black Altar 
which runs through our community by establish by establishing an irrigation scheme for the use of the community. This would afford our rural farmers the opportunity to farm all around the year, thereby improving the livelihood of our rural folk. Also, our desire to see that the stretch of road linking Brifo and Babley Park cannot be overemphasized. Not forgetting the road that links Brifo to Kunikwan, the Fofoi Bridge, and the route through to the main road of Lord. The NDC's flag bearer charged the people not to fall prey to what he termed as lofty promises by the governing MPP, but vote massively for the NDC. He said that will be the only way to boot out the NPP for their failure to honor their promises to the electorate. In 2016, all kinds of promises were flying around. One district, one factory. One million, one million dollars per constituency per year. One village, one dam. One child, one chocolate. And normally when you hear these promises, they sound very sweet to the ear. But the point is, you diminish the faith of our people in our democracy when you do that. Because you know you cannot deliver this promise. One million dollars per constituency per year. In 2016, when I handed, when, uh, 2017, when I handed over the administration of this country to Nanado, one dollar was going for about four cities. So let's even say we fix the exchange rate at four cities. So each year, one million dollars. That's four million Ghana cities. Times four years, that's 16 million. If you had 16 million, couldn't you have built your factory here in Laura by yourselves? But they say when a frog dies, when a frog dies, that is when we know the length of the frog. The MPP frog is dying, so now we can measure it. If your factory hasn't come, it is not coming again. If your one million dollars hasn't come, it is not coming again. If your dam hasn't come, it is not coming. But even those who got the dams, dry season, we went around and looked at them, the dams were dry. And as the rain has even come, the ones that were not dry, the rain has washed the dams away. The former president rounded up his tour with a meeting with the Zongo community in Wa, where the chief, Alhaji Abubakar Siddiq Jiwa, expressed concerns over neglect by the Zongo Development Ministry. The Zongo find that was light and upper way. With a fear of missing a way. With a fear of victimization. Because that is the trademark of the group of drugs. Each single individual here represents a house. If any person among them can come out and go to say, I have received a benefit of it, there will not be copy for the person. We don't get up and wash our face. We are seeing. We will spend that time to you on December 7th. I can assure the nation that we're not going to deploy vigilantes. We're not going to carry weapons on election day. We are counting on the people of Ghana to protect the ballot box. Let's still stay with political campaigning because the Vice President, Dr. Balmia, is asking former President Mahama to apologize for the ethnocentric comments made against the people of Achim. It comes after President Kufado's criticism of Mr. Mahama questioning what he called the silence of senior citizens in the country on the matter. Even though John Mahama has denied making such comments, Dr. Balmia wants him to apologize. The Vice President spoke during his tour of Gushieku in the northern region. One of the key factors to development, key factors, is peace. And peace in Gabon. We have had peace in Gabon as a result of the tireless effort of President Nanado Danko Akufuado working in harmony 
with the Asante Hili, with the Nayiri and the Yabungura, along with the chiefs and people of Dabo. He brought peace to Dabo. And as the chief of Gushigu, Nayab Gushina has said, and I quote him, that Dabong owes Nanadu Danko Akufuado a debt of gratitude, unquote. It is his words, not mine. He appreciates what Nana Adodankwa Kufuado has done. And therefore, Nana Kufuado is not a Dagomba man. He is an Achimna, an Akan, who has brought peace to Dagomba land, part of his effort, along with others, to bring peace to Dagom. And so, we are thankful for him. We want a president who unites us. We don't want a president who divides us. We want a president who unites us. And so the recent utterances of John Muhammad referring to Achim Sakawa boys. Achim Sakawa, how do you take a whole tribe and say, they are Sakawa. How do you do that? And I, my message to John Maham is that you cannot win this presidency with tribalism. Ghana has gone beyond tribalism. It's still the city newsroom. When we come back. Residents of Domifase want compensation from the government following military invasion of the area after land dispute brutalities over a week ago. Stay with us for that and more. to the point of view this and every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. as I, Bernard Avale, get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. Significantly, and we will do 250 million Ghana cities. We built up the stabilization fund and the bulk of the 250 million U.S. dollars, same figures, 250 million cities, 250 million dollars, I can see was significantly what we put in with one oil field. So there was a lack of repression. The sinking fund, we use the sinking fund because you prepare for the things that affect the economy. So when I remember I got the concussion, he, so he took one of them, he, he told me that, well, if you take this, I am sure that you will get some running stomach. But if you do get that running stomach, it's part of the efficacy of the medication. And for me, it was telling that indeed this man knew that he was selling very quack medicine to people. That in fact, the rate of increase of people on the voter, re uh, voter regional road is actually been declining. The, uh, the uh, relative rate of increase. Yes, yes. So on what basis can you make an argument that there's some grand plot cooked somewhere in Lomi to bring you to Togolese to, to come and destabilize Ghanaian politics by somehow distorting outcomes? That cannot be true. I mean, the fact that you have um, um, comatose banks owned by Ghanaians does not serve you any good where people's monies were in jeopardy but what we did in our intervention was not only to then increase the capital so that we had stronger banks we also created um, GATT Remember, the point of view is live every Monday and Wednesday at 9pm only on City TV. The point of view is powered by Airtel Tigo Have you heard that Airtel Tigo calls from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. And Airtel Tigo money transfers are now free on new sims? Now you know. Airtel Tigo. Life is simple. And Lydia Contraceptive. With Lydia, you truly decide.
Rigworld Solutions, forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry. Engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade Kejebil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries. World-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejebil of the Takrade Takwa Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email inquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. Welcome back. Now, some residents of Don Fase, whose properties were destroyed by the military after two of their men were physically assaulted by the community of abandoned disputes between the self styled Mpua Nuhini of Achima Pedra and the coalition of gun states, wants compensation from government for the act. Now, their call comes days after the Ochihini Osaji form with for opinion in a statement disassociated himself from the act perpetrated by Bafo Sapo. Sitting with his carvis, Tete has more. The physical assault on the two military men at Domifase over boundary disputes between the Achim Apigra stool and the coalition of Ga State made headlines in the media space with many condemning the assault by the community on the military men. Some section of Ghanaians also criticized one of the key actors, Sapon Kumankuma, for encroaching on land he does not own. The military, after the assault on their men, deployed officers to the area to restore and also search for some firearms, which is alleged to have been seized by the community. Barely two weeks after the incident, some residents of the community wants government to compensate them for the loss of their properties after they alleged that the military men deployed to the area harassed them and destroyed their personal properties such as television sets, fridges, air conditioners, among others. Some of the residents who have been speaking to City News say they have been forced to spend extra cash to purchase these items. Again, I go back here. I realize my air condition was destroyed, broke into my room and took my laptop. It's actually someone's laptop I was working on. You know, some installations to be done on the tent. And I'm a teacher, so I mean, it's actually a colleague's laptop. So I had it on my steady desk, which is next to the um, the window. So when they broke the window glass, that's a lubber blade. They had access to it and um, they took it away. You know, it's, it's sad. So I don't know which country we're living in now. I think he has to step in and um, make sure whoever punishment is due should be given. And for the lost items that some of us has incurred should be taken care of in a way. The bullet destroyed the things they know that. So people are still scared of what just happened because um, I've never witnessed such a thing before. Most of them travel to their villages and they are not yet in because of uh, the rumors that will still be coming back. So people are still scared. So most of people lost their properties and all that. So I pray the government that should come around. If there is any situation, um, any solution, they should solve it. In Nibia, no, I don't want to go Divisa, 
There were one year Ninke, one be near the family used to fame. I'm a year near fame. I'm a year fame. Go what dungeon, go up here, what tackle was coming, low fame. I was the gentleman who was a baby, I was a baby. Come, she be a done one over call store. Oh, she came in a camp. Over four million. Now I'm a call. I've been on top of that, I mean, you go near me and I mean, near you on a full fee, full fee pay. You okay, he wouldn't. There will be no bounty, I give you a good one. I think no, I may share. I may eat time. Who let me jail with me and I make a slip of knock a malam or silver fence. Now, machine room, I'm a dear. Aside the loss of personal properties, a resident of the town. Sustained gunshot wounds whilst trying to flee from the area, as well as an elderly man who is also alleged to have been assaulted by the military men. For families of the late Tete Kofi, their brother died as a result of the shock he suffered when the military randomly visited his house as part of their routine checks in the area. They lament their loss. Business activities in the area remain slow as a result of the incident, since many still live in fear for the unknown. But these Okada riders tell me they have been kicked out of business after their motorbikes were seized. Catch me, then they beat you, then they motor out, then they take the motor. They take the motor out. Uh, so after now, you never have motor? No, no. So now that you, you know have motor, waiting you did, waiting job you did? I don't have any job. I mean, after they seize the motor, how life, how is life now? Oh, now my life may useless because I have four children. Now this is my motor, so I don't have any job to do to take care of them. I want to go to go. But I got my motor here. I realize so just can't pick our motor go. So now that you know I have motor, how you to survive? Now I've been following my brother, he's an electrician. So he's giving me this much more. But now the job is not coming very well. Assemblyman for the Pano electoral area in Domifase, Vincent Soga believes compensation is needed to put the issue to rest since many have lost their properties. They destroyed things, they took people's money, uh, those who are uh, car boys, they took some of them, their motors away, almost about 13 motorbikes have took away since then, they are walking around, no job, they are not doing anything, and this they are their daily bread. They work this to have their daily bread. Since the motor have took away, they haven't done anything, they are just roaming about. So we are praying to the government to come to our aid. We need some of them need compensation because they beat one man at Fachinko. 
The next day, the person lost his life. We have buried him already. They took someone money at Mamu, 6,000. Now, noise pollution remains a menace that various authorities across the country have been struggling to deal with. Now, this is particularly challenging as there are no devices to record in real time noise levels to serve as evidence to make enforcement much easier. Now, the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly KMA says it is making some headway in addressing this challenge as some students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology have developed a device which is able to send a signal to the KMA whenever one exceeds the acceptable noise level for a given area. Our correspondent Edward Opomafo has more. Noise pollution is an emerging problem, and as a result, various assemblies have been facing difficulties in controlling it. As a measure to address this, the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly, for instance, has set up a noise control unit to regulate noise in the metropolis. The laws on controlling noise basically talk about excessive noise, but a challenge in enforcing the law is that noise is relative in any given environment. This makes its regulation one of the most difficult tasks for authorities, churches, mocks, public preachers, public advertisers, among others, have been identified as potential noise emitters. There are standard noise levels for all areas which individuals and groups are not supposed to violate. Within the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly, for instance, permit is given based on the accepted noise level for an area under the law and are given specific hours of operation. Those in residential areas are not supposed to exceed 50 decibels, while commercial areas are not allowed to exceed 65 decibels. In industrial areas, persons are not allowed to exceed 70 decibels. The KMA says there have, however, been loopholes in this implementation, and it is always difficult to get evidence to rely on in enforcing the laws. A team from KNUSD Professors and doctors and then students, physics, physics department, came out with a gadget, being as a residential or commercial, when you operate above that level, it will give us a sign. If you give, it will give you, the operator, a sign that you are operating above the stipulated level. And as such, bring it down. Now, after a series of warning and you are not doing it, right? It will signal to our office on our phones that this man, this potential noise emitter at this area, now it will tell us the level that you have operated, which is above, and then the place that you are operating. The device was developed by a group of students from different backgrounds at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The negative impact of uh, noise pollution cannot be overemphasized. Uh, people coming from work, People, can, people cannot rest uh, because of the noise generated in the night to all night from other and other clubs. It's very important that we minimize these things as they have uh, health implication for the uh, for society. The team leader of the students, Stephen Frimpon, explains how, after the engagement with the KMA, they were able to develop the device with adequate technology that could assist in enforcing the law. Um, since um, the students were new from different departments, we had to define each um, student's um, responsibility in the uh, project. That is, um, the electrical um, engineering students were supposed to get us an electrical circuit with component that is going to help and bring out something that is going to measure noise. That was their duty. The IT team were, were supposed to write a code to buttress it. And the physics team were also going to support us with the calculations and research. And the arts team were supposed to get us the casing for the device. The students are, however, calling for partners to come on board to help them scale up the idea and replicate it in other parts of the country and even abroad. Now, a 29-year-old resident of Ifiakuma in Takradi, Alex Donko, has developed a life-threatening tumor. He's appealing to the public to help him raise 18,000 cities for surgical operation. 
the former mobile phone accessory trader says he has lost all his savings in an effort to get a cure for the tumor which is eating into his right eye. He has been given the next two months by the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital to raise the amount for surgical operation. He has been speaking to our correspondent, Akwesi J. Enim. Narrating his story, the 29-year-old resident of Efiekuma in Takradi said it all started as a small pimple, but today has become a danger to his life. The condition started a pimples. Then I, I went to hospital, Efiekwanta. So Efiekwanta people allowed me to make a... a a scan with it. The cost is it eight hundred and forty. So my parents helped me for a Dow City scan. Then they said, no, this one there, unless they, uh, they, 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 I see the senior doctor. So the senior doctor come and make a cross check. Then they said, no, this one is a tumor. So the tumor, then I asked for the cause of the tumor. Then they said the cause of the tumor is the 18,000. Alex says the Confuanochi Teaching Hospital has given him a little over a month to organize the 18,000 Ghana City surgical costs, but his only hope to raise the funds to survive the tumor is for the public to immediately come to his aid as he has already exhausted his savings looking for a cure unless i release that eighteen thousand, so ending of this month i should i should i should bring that eighteen thousand. so if i don't have a i should make a public distance for them to make a happy hands so i need a happy for my surgery so anyone who watch who is watching me on this video, you should, you should help me. So any little amount you go, he, he or she will get them. You should help me. I will appreciate it. And God will help him or she. His family, who are to come to his aid in raising the funds, is also challenged. As a family, it's very difficult to raise such an amount. Being um, this COVID season, people are suffering, business are going down. So with this condition, we are appealing to the general public to come to our aid uh, in support of this surgery. And it is not a, a joke. We, we have gone to so many places. We have spent a lot of money. And being here, we are, we are appealing to the general public to come onto our aid to support our brother who is in this crisis. You're still watching City News Ramon City TV. Still ahead. Ten women in Mankesim who could not afford the cost of surgical operation on the health condition fistula can now heave a sigh of relief. We have that story and others. Stay with us. materials for this building. I can see that. But my brother, you know we just last year you built this house. Oh yeah. When the wall started peel off like banana due to rising damp. My brother, that's been my issue. I've tried so many things, but nothing works. You know what? They even use that black rubber thing. Only before the concrete casting. You made that baller rubber. Oh. My brother, you would have saved yourself the stress if only you used Visqueen DPM from Vertigo Limited. Really? That'd be what my puppy used for house. And over so many years, the house still did come up. For purchases and inquiries, contact Vertigo Limited at Spinters Road, Accra, or in Kumasi at Oshimasi Kwaraswa. Visqueen DPM, no size. Election 2020, Ghana makes a choice.
tracking and bringing you reports of the presidential and parliamentary campaigns across the length and breadth of this nation. Analyzing campaign activities and election data with our panelists on the Voters' Diary. The Voters' Diary is the most factual, instructive, and balanced election 2020 analysis program on television. The Voters' Diary, every weekday on City TV from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Stay informed on all the relevant issues on election 2020. Tune into the Voters' Diary, it's Ghana's choice. Welcome back to the City Newsroom. Now, 10 out of the over 200 women who are part of the backlog of women due for a fistula operation at the Messy Women's Clinic can now heave a sigh of relief after the Tema Club, a non-governmental organization, supported them to undergo surgery. Now, the club also supported the facility with some personal protective equipment and promised to buy two incubators for them. An amount of 36,000 CDs was also presented to the facility to commence the surgery. City News' Calvin Sete has more. Fistulas are usually caused by injury or surgery and may also form after an infection has led to severe inflammation. Inflammatory bowel conditions such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are examples of conditions that lead to fistulas forming between two loops of intestines. Dr. Justice Osaiba, medical director for the facility, indicated that women who don't go through proper antenatal care often suffer from fistula. At the Mercy Women's Catholic Hospital, over 200 women are in line to be operated after suffering from the condition. According to the medical director for the facility, these disorders can often lead to more complications if not corrected. He explains to City News what causes these disorders. Um, it normally occurs as a complication of um, childbirth. And because of that complication, the, a hole develops between a woman's um, private part and then the bladder or the rectum so that they are constantly leaking either urine or feces from their private parts. And these are the women that we attend to and then try and help to correct that defect through surgery. Whenever any woman is pregnant, you should take the antenata very seriously. And then also, when most importantly, when they go into labor, they should seek health care at a facility whereby there is a trained personnel to conduct a supervised delivery. For members of the Tema Club who made the gesture to the women at the facility, this is part of the corporate social responsibility to help the needy in society, thus urging all who are well to do to emulate this gesture. Our pledge was to help them reduce the backlog of pending fistula surgeries. We're told they had 200 women on the waiting list for surgeries. So we came today to support them to, take, to do 10 of the surgeries. So we presented them with 36,000 CDs to do 10 surgeries and support the rehabilitation of 10 of the, of the patients. We've also pledged today to support the hospital with two incubators, to give back to society because there are too many, many people with needs that can be met. Now, proprietors and proprietresses of private schools in the Sunyan municipality of the Bono region are urging the government of Ghana to create a fund to cover the salaries of teaching and non-teaching staff of private schools across the country. According to these owners, their contributions of private schools in the country cannot be underestimated and so 
they must be supported in this crucial time. Sitting is Michael Sapomfum, small. During his 16th address to the nation on COVID-19 fight in Ghana, President Dekufuado announced that the next academic year will begin in January 2021. Following this, private schools across the country have spoken on the effects of the decision on the operations, especially the payment of their teachers and non-teaching staff. Most of these private schools depend on school fees to pay their workers. The president of the Ghana National Association of Private Schools and the Sunyani Municipality, Pepra Yebwa, is calling on government to create a support fund purposely for private schools in the country. If they can able to create a fund purposely for private schools, unlike the stimulus package, which is uh, general to every citizen in this country, uh, we are expecting that if that fund is being created, you can use to, I mean, buttress the payment of the uh, private school teachers. You know, they've been in the house for six good months without paying. If we had this uh, fund that has been created for the private school, we can easily use it to pay our private school teachers. You know, they are suffering a lot in the house. Some proprietors of some private schools in the Sunyani municipality have been speaking on the association's call for a support fund for private schools. When you take my school, for instance, I have 150 staff, 150 staff teaching and not teaching, and they have been left to their feet because look as if I'm stuck and I can't continue borrowing money to pay them. We thought we could get the support that was promised us by the MBSSI, but it is not coming. Whenever our um, uh, leaders visit the office of the president, what they tell us is surely they, those who have applied will get the money. But when is the money coming? When? When? When is it coming? Because we are, we are in the sieve month when we were made to close our schools down. Now we should make it possible for us to get something like the stimulus package that he made mention of. So it will help us to support our uh, teachers and also to help us also to manage this season. Because it's very tough for us and we are all in crisis. So we are appealing to the government to help us at the end of the day while we are on our knees begging him. Meanwhile, some parents in Sunyani have been sharing their ideas on managing their children until the academic begins in January. 2021. I was thinking of having a private teacher for her because she can't follow me to work every day. She comes, she stays till I close. Even if I want to go to the market, she has to follow me. So if I get a private teacher, that would be okay for me. Even if I say I should, I will leave her at home, who is going to take care of her? So I should bring her. I have to do it. Unfortunately, my children are also in the house. I don't know how to control the children as they are in the house. They are also left at the mercy of what the COVID. The children are at home. We can't control them. They move about everywhere, playing football and all, all other things. Right now, those who have come to school are even safe because they are under the control of the teachers. The protocol is observed for all of them. They don't move around, they don't do everything, so they are very safe. But those in the house are not safe. We cannot control them because we are not at home. Well, that's it for today's edition of the City Newsroom. Log on to our website, citynewsroom.com. We have more stories there. You can also subscribe to City TV on YouTube for more exclusive video contents from City TV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store or the App Store and keep updated on the go. And on DSTV we are on channel 363 and Good TV on channel 182. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. Mine is Umaru Sandamado. Thank you for watching.